It has become the modern American family pastime, traveling the country to compete in youth sports. So many families are doing it these days that a brand new industry is emerging across the country, an industry designed to cater to their obsession and lighten their wallets. It's 5 a.m. on a summer morning. When's time to get up? Brush your teeth? But at this home in Northern Virginia, it's time to wake up and get going. We got a booby babe, let's go. Angie Coe and her family are packing to leave town again. Helmet, glove, cleats. How many bats are you taking? Two. Everything in the bag and we're out by a certain time and we're not gonna be late. I'm not having it. How many weekends a year are you going through that sort of ritual? Um, 30? I'd say about 30. About 30. It doesn't stop. All right, socks. Because the Coes are trying to raise young athletes. And in today's America, that means there's no time to waste. The Coes are one of millions of American families who spend much of their free time traveling the country so their children can play against others from far away. The families trade their time and their money in exchange for elite coaching, plenty of games, and better competition than the local Little League. This is the world of travel sports. Join it or be left behind. It's so competitive. And if you don't keep up with what everyone else is doing, um, your kid's gonna fall behind. How big a part of your life has this turned out to be? <laughs> 50 percent. Yes, 50 I would, percent. I was gonna or more. say a little more. I was gonna say, well, maybe more. Um, yes. You spend half your time thinking about travel sports, packing your kids up for travel sports, preparing for travel sports. Yes. You don't know until you're in it, right? And now we're knee deep in it. And you say, holy cow. It drives their relationships, it drives their schedules. It becomes the driver to the lifestyle of that family for the year. Dev Patik is a leading consultant in the youth sports business, advising private developers and cities, trying to cash in on what the travel industry now refers to as sports tourism. Last year, sports tourism grew by 20% over the year prior. It's a $9 billion industry. You're telling me that sports for kids is a $9 billion business? It's an incredible transformation with massive ripple effects in the rest of our society. People aren't traveling because they want to take a nice vacation on the beach or go play golf for a weekend. They're traveling because their kids are involved in travel sports. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So we call it a tourniquetion, right? It's a tournament vacation. It's replaced the time off that families may have had for other activity. The week we met them, the Coes were headed to one of America's most popular family vacation spots, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. But there would be little time for Sun and Sam. Instead, they were at the ballpark, where the Coes 13-year-old son, Eli, and his team, the Virginia Stars, played in a tournament called the Youth Baseball Nationals. Nine games in six days, with only one day off. It's a good thing you don't care too much. Right. <laughs> you keep your feelings to yourself. I like that. Why, why are you here? Why are you in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina in the middle of August? Let's go! Woo! Woo! Nice job! That's why you're here. That's why I'm here. <laughs> Have you ever once said to yourself, I don't want to travel this weekend, I don't want to load up the car, and I don't want to stand in 85 degree heat? No, because he loves it, and I love it. I, this is awesome. That demand is why Myrtle Beach is no longer just promoting its beaches and golf courses. They're also now selling youth sports. The city now has nine baseball fields of its own and nine more at a nearby complex developed by former major leaguer Cal Ripken. And for basketball and volleyball, Myrtle Beach opened this 100,000 square foot sports center. Welcome to Lake Point Sporting Community. It's one of countless cities across the country that have poured money into an arms race, building youth sports facilities to attract youth sports families and meet an almost endless demand. And where there was just a small rural town, this popped up, almost in the middle of nowhere. 
As far as my eye can see, I see soccer fields. Yeah. As far as you can see that way, you see soccer fields. What was here before? Corn and soybeans. Andy Cook is the mayor of tiny Westfield, Indiana. It was his idea to build what he aptly calls Grand Park. It opened last year. Midwestern farmland transformed into one of the largest youth sports facilities in the world. And since you can only truly appreciate its size from above, we asked the mayor for an aerial tour. How big is it? This is uh, uh, 400 acres, mile and a half long and one half mile wide. I see a lot of fields down there. Give me the count. Uh, we have uh, 31 outdoor soccer fields plus some space allocated for recreational soccer, three full-size indoor soccer fields, and we have 26 diamonds. If it sounds absurd, that's what people politely told Mayor Cook when he built it. In a word, what did people say to you? You're nuts. But the mayor in his town may have the last laugh, all the way to the bank. Those 60 brand new professional grade fields are constantly filled with kids and their families. Last year we had just about 1.2 million visits to Grand Park and our visitors spent $145 million in this area. $145 million? Yes, sir. You've heard this before. If you build it... I got sick of that. Thank you. Don't say it. But if you build it, what happens? They come. And keep coming. And they keep coming. During one week in July, Grand Park hosted an astonishing 400 teams from all over the country. Kids as young as eight and as old as 17. 7,000 athletes in all here in the middle of the cornfields. Athletes like the Texans, a girls soccer team who drove 16 hours from Austin, chauffeured, of course, by their moms and dads. How often are you making trips like this? Too often. Too uh, often? You don't you... tell your kids that? No. Mm -hmm. oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. no. We you support do? 100%. <laughs> but behind their backs, it's too often. <laughs> Again? Yes, behind their back, it's... How often is it? How many weekends out of the year? Well, in the fall, we traveled pretty much almost every single weekend. We've actually played in about 10 different states in the last two years. And everywhere sports families go, they spend on hotels, on food, and on registration fees for each tournament. What do you spend? <laughs> I don't, don't know we want to go there? I don't know that any of us have ever totaled it because it would be shocking. Is anybody watching what flies out of their wallets and their purses when it comes to spending on kids and sports? Oh, uh, we I watch. Think, I think we watch. We, you we watch. watch it. You watch it go. <laughs> yeah. We wave. We watch it go from the pocket to the to yeah. the whatever. Right. You know. Yeah. But is it worth it in the long run? Absolutely. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The organization that we're in, we have a credit card on file. We get an email to say, hey, we're getting ready to charge a credit card. So that's the way it is. You have to have a credit card on file. Um, so you don't even really recognize. You don't even, I don't even pay attention because we're not taking our kid out of it. That's just the way it is. The Coes figure they spend at least $15,000 every year on sports for their twins, Eli and Jasmine. But like lots of parents, they think it will eventually pay off. 10 years at $15,000 a pop, that's $150,000. Wow. Is that a wise investment? Do you think you're going to see $150,000 in return on college scholarships? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We yes. hope. Yeah, yes. Money is just part of the sacrifice. Most weekends they're on the road, the Co family has to split up. Angie takes Eli for travel baseball. And Brian takes Jasmine to her club track meets. They make the commitment so their kids have a chance to be as good as they can be. It's a fact that youth sports organizers know and exploit. The Baseball Nationals. You have to come here. Eli's event in Myrtle Beach is essentially marketed as a national championship. But organizers hold the same tournament a dozen times a year 
in locations all over the country. The only difference is the color of the logo and the city. It's as if somebody has created this world that every parent in the U.S. has got to get on the treadmill and run along with. Yeah, I'm just sorry I wasn't the one that came up with it. <laughs> Yeah, because no it's kidding. big business. It yeah. is a huge business. Huge enough that now some down and out cities where the jobs and businesses have long gone are turning to, yes, youth sports tourism as a cure. Dev Patik, the youth sports consultant, was recently hired to help bring Rocky Mount, North Carolina back from the dead. How big is this facility going to be? It's 165,000 square feet eight full basketball courts that translate to 16 volleyball courts. So this facility is intended to breathe life into downtown. This isn't just, hey, let's have a few sporting events. This is, let's revitalize downtown Rocky Mount. And create a destination where there wasn't one. The sports center is being built just blocks from the center of downtown. And the city's development director, John Gesso, says a transformation is already underway. Six of the eight buildings on this block have been purchased by one individual, along with two buildings on the other side, and then another building on the other side of these buildings. And what are the plans then for this block? Um, we already have a restaurateur that went in here. This is going to be a, another restaurant in the front of this old uh, drugstore with residential units upstairs and retail downstairs. You can all say thanks to this booming business of youth sports travel. Absolutely. Rocky Bounds facility is set to open in about a year. And there are dozens more youth sports projects around the country coming soon to a city near you. It's enough to make you think that more kids are playing sports than ever. But this building boom will not benefit everyone. That's because as more and bigger facilities are being built, millions of kids are being priced out of the fun. Sports participation rates in almost every major sport over the last 10 years have declined. So if you're a suburbanite whose kid is playing sport, you probably believe that more kids are playing sport, but it's not true. Are children being left behind? No question children are being left behind in sport, and they're being left behind because travel sports is dominating the landscape. Let's go, guys! Back in Myrtle Beach, the Coes are at the park for day six of the tournament, and they have made it to the championship game. It's the last inning, and the game is tied. Eli, you're the winning run. Be ready. Go, 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 go. Eli Coe scored the tournament-winning run, and his Virginia Stars are champions. For today, that is. Because in a few weeks, the Coes will pack their bags again and head out on the road for their next tournament. Thank you for watching. Remember, you can catch the rest of the latest edition of Real Sports all month long on HBO.